So I've been talking a lot about the Cincinnati Bengals. And I am a Steelers fan, but despite me being a fan of Pittsburgh, I have to give credit where it's due. The Cincinnati Bengals, I feel, are going to be one of the best teams in the NFL. And I made a video or segment a couple of weeks ago saying why I feel that Cincinnati will have the best offense in the NFL this year. And I saw a good amount of people in the comment section saying, JT, you're overrating Cincinnati. They're not going to be all that great. They got lucky last year. They're going to suffer from the Super Bowl hangover. (sighs) Come on, man. I think you guys, I think some of you guys are really just hating. Let's be for real. Yes, the Super Bowl hangover, I'm not going to deny and say that it's not real because there definitely has been a lot of teams that have suffered from the Super Bowl hangover effect. However, I don't think Cincinnati is going to be one of those teams. For one, you improved. Cincinnati did not get worse. They pretty much kept their whole entire team from last year. They pretty much have all of their entire starting lineup returning going into the 2022 NFL season. On top of that, they got better. They had the worst offensive line in the NFL last season. Joe Burrow got sacked, what, 10 times in their divisional round win against the Tennessee Titans? I think the Bengals were their only team to win a playoff game while allowing their quarterback to get sacked in the double digits. That is not a coincidence. Do you know how good of a quarterback you have to be to be able to overcome that? Then I saw a comment that almost made me lose all of my humanity for just a brief 30 seconds. I saw somebody have the nerve to tell me that Joe Burrow got carried by the Cincinnati Bengals wide receiver course and he got carried by the talent on his team last year. You know what I want to tell you? Please, shut the hell up. Are you really going to tell me that Joe Burrow got carried by his supporting cast, take Joe Burrow off the Cincinnati Bengals last season and tell me where they go. You see, a lot of people have to understand something. A large reason for why Cincinnati has had this remarkable turnaround in a short amount of time has been because of Joe Burrow. You see, the reason why I think Cincinnati is going to be good this year isn't really because I believe in Zach Taylor. It isn't really because of how solid their defense was last year. It isn't just because they improved the offensive line. It's not just because they have Joe Mixon, Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins. I have faith in Cincinnati mainly because of Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow is different. This isn't your normal quarterback. You don't often see a quarterback go into year two of his NFL career coming off a devastating season ending injury his rookie year and take his team all the way to the Super Bowl. And they had a pretty close game also because there were a lot of people who thought that the Rams were just going to go in and win that Super Bowl with ease. So with Joe Burrow being at the helm, I think that Cincinnati is going to be perfectly fine. Joe Burrow is somebody who doesn't tolerate losing. He has came out and said this publicly many, many times that losing is unacceptable. And one thing about Joe Burrow is that he's focused. You don't see him on social media a lot. You don't see him in the headlines all that often unless it's about something good that he's doing on the field, such as torching NFL defenses and helping turn around the Cincinnati Bengals franchise. Listen, the Cincinnati Bengals are all into winning now. Too many people have to stop living in the past and keep saying that the Bengals are the Bengals. If you judge somebody based off your past, then you're just a prisoner to the past. How are you ever supposed to move forward in life if you're somebody who dwells too much on what happened five years ago? Obviously, this isn't the same Cincinnati Bengals that we saw years prior. This is a new organization. This is an organization that is committed to winning. This is an organization that is committed to doing everything that it takes now to win a Super Bowl and bring that Lombardi Trophy home back to Cincinnati. So I'm really not understanding why people can't see the Cincinnati Bengals in the same light that I do. 
And I can understand if you don't think that they're going to be one of the best teams in the AFC, but I think that it's pretty reasonable to expect this team to be right back in the playoffs. You can say the division got tough. I understand that. I understand that Baltimore had a lot of injuries last year. They're fully healthy this season. Pittsburgh got better. We don't know what's going on with Deshaun Watson and the Cleveland Browns. That's just something that we have to wait and see. But even if he does play, Cincinnati is still the probably the safest lock for the playoffs as any other team in the AFC other than the Buffalo Bills. I mean, I think too many people are just trying to undermine the success that Cincinnati had. You see, the reason why a lot of you guys are so hesitant to hop on the Cincinnati hype train is because you got to see it again. You think last year was luck. Let me tell you something. You don't go into the playoffs, right, and beat the number one seed on the road in the divisional round. You don't do that by luck. You don't also go on the road and beat the Kansas City Chiefs twice in the season. Both, yeah, you beat Kansas City twice on the road in the AFC Conference Championship game. And you dominated them in the second half. That isn't luck. You came really close to defeating the LA Rams in the Super Bowl. If you had the offensive line that you had now in last year's Super Bowl, you probably win that game. Because Von Miller and Aaron Donald wrecked havoc on Cincinnati's offensive line in the final drive of that game. So I'm not understanding why people keep trying to run with this narrative that the Cincinnati Bengals just had this once in a lifetime season. Because I promise you that Cincinnati is going to be right back in the playoffs. And they're not going anywhere no time soon unless Joe Burrow just surprises us all and just decides to walk away from the game. And from what I've heard him say in a couple of his public appearances, he was on the Full Sin podcast, I believe, with Bob Minnery and whatnot. Cincinnati is fully locked in on this season, and they're looking to run it back. And I believe that they're going to run it back. I believe that they are going to end up facing the Buffalo Bills this year in the AFC Conference Championship game. Now, I'm not going to tell you who I think is going to win that game. And I don't even know who I would pick for me to want to see who would win that game. Because I love the Buffalo Bills, but I also love Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. And this is coming from a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. But you guys have to accept that sometimes we have people... And life who just seem to come out of nowhere and just take over and just start to dominate. And I think that this is starting to become a new era of Cincinnati Bengals football. This isn't the Bengals team that you have seen in the past. And you see, why are people so hesitant to change? What's so bad about change? What's so bad about a team in Cincinnati rising up? And becoming a championship caliber football team. What's so bad about rooting for Joe Burrow? What's so bad about rooting for the underdog? You get what I'm saying? The underdog comes out of nowhere. And then when the underdog ends up cementing themselves as top dog status, we start to push back on it. Now, I'm not saying that Cincinnati is a top dog right now. Because you can't consider yourself a top dog until you win a championship. But one thing that I'm not going to count out is Joe Burrow. If you don't have faith in Zach Taylor or the Cincinnati Bengals defense, at least have faith in Joe Burrow. Because this guy is different. This guy is cut from a different cloth. He is cerebral. This man walked into Cincinnati and pretty much changed the whole entire organization from how they handle things in free agency, from how they build a team around Joe Burrow. Before Joe Burrow got to Cincinnati, what were the Bengals known for? They were known for being really cheap, frugal with their money. They didn't want to dish out the money necessary to build a competitive football team. All of a sudden, Joe Burrow comes in, right? He takes them to the Super Bowl in his second year after having the worst offensive line in the league, right? And then what does Cincinnati do immediately after the offseason? Oh, they sign Alex Kappa. They sign Lael Collins. Who else did they sign? Ted Carr is. It's it's one more person that I'm... Yeah. And you already got Jonah... You already got Jonah Williams at left tackle. So this offensive line has improved. 
So this is a team that has pretty much lost nobody of significance this offseason, pretty much keeps their same starters from last year, and on top of that, they improve. I don't understand why people are trying to make it seem to be a hot take that the Bengals are going to be in that conversation once again this year. The fact that people are trying to use this whole Super Bowl hangover argument, it's just complete nonsense. Because I ain't, I ain't hear nobody saying that the Kansas City Chiefs were going to have a Super Bowl hangover. Huh? Yeah. Even when Philadelphia won the Super Bowl, I didn't really hear too many people saying they were going to have a Super Bowl hangover. I heard people saying they were going to be right back in it. I don't understand why there are so many. I don't even hear people saying that the Rams are going to have a Super Bowl hangover. And they won the Super Bowl, hey, and they won the Super Bowl. Just because you win the Super Bowl, that doesn't excuse you from having the Super Bowl hangover also. You get what I'm saying? There are plenty of teams that have won championships and just disappeared out of nowhere. So, it, it just kind of really irritates me. I, I really shouldn't be spending this much time having to elaborate on this. But, you know, I do have people out there that just like to be you know, know know-it-alls, or they just hate Cincinnati for some reason. I don't know if you're a Bengals fan, a Salty Browns fan. I don't know what it is. I don't know why I got so much pushback for just saying that the Bengals were going to be one of the best teams in the NFL. I don't think it's that much of a hot take. If you look at their roster, on paper, they have the most talented offense in the NFL. They have a top five offensive line, no worse than top 10, the best receiving core in the NFL. Joe Burrow pretty much is already a top three, top five quarterback in the game. You got Joe Mixon, and plus you have a really good defense. What What's so hard to, to see? You get what I'm saying? And even if you go back to last year, the Bengals, what, were, what was their regular season record? What, 10 and 7? There were a couple of games that if the ball bounced in their direction, they could have easily won. Take that Green Bay Packers loss, for example, when they had all the missed field goals by Evan McPherson. If Evan McPherson makes one of those kicks, they end up winning that game. So there were a lot of close games that the Bengals lost last year. And if they would have won, they would have easily had the number one overall seed over the Tennessee Titans. I mean, you guys have to give credit to where credit is due. We have a team that at this moment right now going into the 2022 NFL season is going to be a premier powerhouse in the AFC. And I understand that AFC is stacked. If you want to sell me on the cheese, Chargers, being better than Cincinnati, you can go ahead. I'm not going to agree with you, but I mean, I'm not going to disagree with you neither. That's a respectable argument. But to give me the whole Super Bowl hangover nonsense... I'm not buying it. Joe Burrow isn't going anywhere. So you're not going to sell me on the fact that they're going to have a Super Bowl hangover. And you're definitely not going to come on here on this platform when we only care about logical, reasonable explanations and tell me that Joe Burrow got carried by Cincinnati. Come on, man. What are you? Are you a hater? Or are you a fan of the game? Can we just take a minute to sit back and respect greatness? I'm not dick riding. I'm telling you guys the God honest truth. Joe Burrow is cut different. So instead of hating, just sit back, shut your mouth, stop hating, stop drinking that Gatorade, and just watch greatness. It doesn't matter. I'm a Steelers fan. And even I could admit, you get what I'm saying? I'm kind of rooting for Cincinnati. And I'm going to be rooting for Cincinnati in every single game they play this year. Other than when they play the Pittsburgh Steelers. And they play the Pittsburgh Steelers week one. So guess who I'm going to be rooting for? I'm going to have my terrible towel. I'm going to have my Pittsburgh Steelers cup. And I'm going to be rooting for my Steelers. And any other team that the Bengals play other than Pittsburgh, I'm going to be rooting for the Bengals. Let's just sit back and watch greatness. Let's just sit back and watch Joe Burrow work. This is a really good team. I don't understand why people don't see what I see sometimes. And it's not like I'm not logical most of the times. Some of my takes very rarely can be a little bit out there. But I think that this is a pretty centered take. I think that the Bengals are one of the best football teams in the AFC. I really shouldn't have spent so much time. But it it really just frustrated me. It, It really just frustrated me, man. On to the next thing.